Watershed strokes are a form of lack of oxygen delivery to the tissue where two different vascular or blood vessel distributions come into an area of the body and there are areas of tissue that do not have overlapping blood supply. So if you block off one, all the tissue in that area has no other collateral circulation to come in and pick up the slack. So there are very many areas in the body that are in vascular watershed distributions and they are amongst the most susceptible areas of tissue in the human body that can be harmed by this blood sludging process as a function of zeta and as a function of mass. By example, if you ever had frostbite before, you find out that the things in your body that usually get frostbite most frequently are the tips of the fingers, the tips of the ears, the tips of the nose, and, and, and your toes. Anything that projects from the body in the outer areas are in water or end vascular territories, meaning that's the end of the blood supply, where the flow pressures are the lowest and where the blood flow is going to spin around and come back up the venous side and go back to the lungs and go back to the heart. These areas have low flow, but more particularly, many of these areas also don't have a lot of collateral circulation coming to them because they're also at the end vascular territories. And even in emergency medicine, when we give uh, special injections to take away pain, we sometimes use a drug called epinephrine, which causes blood vessels to actually constrict really tightly. And unfortunately, we don't use epinephrine in anything that projects at the end of the body, the nose, the toes, the fingertips, the ear tips, uh, because these areas are susceptible to having a lack of blood flow by closing down the vessels. Now the same process is happening in response to uh, the zeta and mass and the watershed vascular areas are most importantly and most critically adversely affected. Now when you have strokes you can have a TIA which is a transient temporary ischemic lack of oxygen attack and a transient ischemic attack usually lasts for about 24 hours and then the partial blockage of the blood flow goes away. But again, any area in a watershed vascular territory is most susceptible to these temporary blockages of blood flow. And we also have something in neurology called a rind or a rind, R-I-N-D. And that is called a reversible ischemia, again, the word meaning lack of oxygen delivery, neurological deficit and that is something again that emerges generally from lack of blood flow or lack of use of oxygenation or low oxygen content in the body and the neurological damage can be temporary and then it comes back. Uh, reversible ischemic attack, transient ischemic attack and these things can become permanent which is a, a complete stroke and it can be in large vessels or micro vessels and again the micro vessels you have 600,000 miles of these throughout the whole body which is 95% of the blood vessels in, you, in the body. We cannot see them. They're microscopic. And when things are happening down there, uh, you can have adversity to every organ system in the body. So that will be important information to know. Now, this next slide here is just showing you on both sides here, these colored areas of the brain. I put this in for you to get appreciation that the colored areas were created by uh, a tissue uh, doctor who was looking under a microscope and found that different areas of the human brain have different cellular structures. And he coded these areas, the system, by coding the different cellular structures in terms of their arrangement or in terms of the cell types or in these areas he, as a man by the name of Broadman. So we call it the Broadman classification system. So Broadman's classification breaks down the brain into differences in cells across the whole uh, three pound breadth of this brain that we have. And then also uh, the functional doctors who have looked at the functions of the brain and try to localize that to various areas of the brain have also colored it up as well and say, well, language production goes here, language comprehension goes here, speech repetition goes here, preceding faces goes down here. And so you can functionally localize a map of the brain or you can, uh, you can map the brain out in terms of its cells. But the critical thing is understand that although the brain is one homogenous mass, a three pound gelatinous mass in your brain, you could actually put your hand in and you wouldn't feel anything because there's no pain receptors in the brain. Uh, we don't do that, but um, uh, by, by analogy. So when things are happening to the brain substance itself, it gives off no pain sensation. So your body doesn't know things are happening there. So like a heart attack, when you have lack of blood flow to the heart, you get a lot of pain there because the lack of oxygen creates chemicals that signal pain receptors and your brain says uh, there's something wrong. And that pain, uh, we usually 
deal with morphine, but the brain, when there's no blood flow to some of the areas of the brain, there are no pain receptors there to signal the body that something's wrong. We're kind of uh, blind to it, not only externally from medical devices and tools to see in technology uh, adversity here from ischemia or lack of blood flow and oxygen, but also your body is, uh, is unknowing that this is actually going on, so you have no idea that you're actually having uh, a lack of oxygen to the brain when this actually happens.